Today we'll be reviewing the single board computer which was graciously sent in by Zima board. This is an entire computer that's the same size as a pack of cards, while weighing only as much as a cup of coffee. The Zima single board computer comes in three variants, this particular unit being the Zima board 832. It runs on the Intel Celeron N3450 processor, which has four cores that run at a max frequency of 2.2 GHz. This board also comes with 32 GB of storage and is powered by a 12 volt DC adapter, which has an extremely low power draw of around 6 watts. The board comes with 2 gigabit ethernet and 2 USB 3.0 ports on the back. The single mini display port is used to connect to the monitor. There are also two SATA 3.0 ports and one PCIe 2.0 X4 slot for additional storage options. One thing to note is that a label next to each port would have been nice, so you don't have to refer back to the manual every time. To start, using the Zima board is really simple. Simply connect to a monitor using a mini display to DP port or a mini display to HDMI cable. We have some recommendations in the links below. The Zima board will boot up to a Linux variant called Casa OS, which is based on Debian. If you have another bootable in the USB and want to use it, select the UEFI option during boot. Now, what can you actually do with the Zima board? Well, since this board comes preloaded with a Unix based OS, you can do pretty much everything that a normal Linux operating system would offer. The Debian OS is a GUI based operating system, so it can be used for web browsing, playing arcade style video games, simple ones at least, and Office software comes courtesy of LibreOffice. However, the main intended use of the Zima board will be acting as a low end web server, database, or file server. These need to be on continuously, so the Zima board's low power draw is perfect for such uses. Now let's see an example of using the Zima board as a cloud file server. The SyncThing application allows files to be shared on the same network from multiple devices. So if you have some photos on your cell phone and want to back them up to a hard drive, you can use SyncThing to do this seamlessly. The application is installed by the Zima board by default, and if you download an Android phone, you can download from the Play Store. On the Zima board, connect the phone by scanning the QR code on your phone and select the folders that you want to store on the Zima board. That's all. The application will sync file both ways or from only one device as the host and the other as a receiver, as a backup solution. The files will always be synced up provided that both devices are on the same internal network and sync thing is running on both the Zima board and the Android device. For iOS users, this app is not available natively, but an app called Mobius Sync can be used. This solution is great because the folder on the Zima board can be shared with other devices or on the same network, basically making it an NAS or NAS. If you find that you're always running out of space on your phone or iCloud or Google Drive, this is a cheap backup solution and very scalable as you can connect an external drive and get even more storage. There are some advanced setups that will allow you to access the files over the internet outside of your own network. If you need more information on this, click on the links below for the documentation on how you can set that up. Now let's look at a few advantages slash disadvantages of this system. It's easy to configure. Although it is a Linux based system, the CASA OS wrapper adds a nice GUI interface and you hardly have to interact with the sometimes confusing command line. Its power draw is very low at only about 6 watts per hour. Storage expansion is provided via PCI 2.0 X4 slots, 2 times SATA 6.0 gigabit per second ports, and 2 USB 3.0 ports. It also comes with two dual network 2 gigabit per second Ethernet ports. The Zima board can also be booted with Windows, and it comes with a powerful array of utilities and software to extend functionality. Now, some disadvantages are that the system comes pre installed with the Wayland UI system. This is a newer and faster UI experience. However, not many apps, especially screen recording apps, support this. So I had to revert back to the old X11 interface, and while it did support all apps, the screen slowing was significantly slower. 8GB of RAM could be a limitation for some server applications, especially if running a DB and web server at the same time. There is no way to upgrade the RAM. There's also no USB-C availability. In conclusion, this small board is a complete package and can substitute any dedicated NAS or cloud server. Since this is based on Linux, the Zima board is configurable and you can customize the board to suit your needs. For advanced users, Docker packages can be installed based on the usage. The board runs at a very low power and has good heat dissipating heatsink, so it can be used on a 24-7 basis. Just don't try to mine Bitcoin with this. Hope you liked the video. To buy the Zima board, click the link below.
Thanks for watching and please subscribe.